Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy, not the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. We're in Mahakam, so we're at the third chapter, I think, of this game. And uh, we just met with uh, Gabor Zigrin, a relative of Yarpen Zigrin. Uh, you might know him from the books. I'm, I'm not actually sure if he actually makes an appearance in any of the games. So if you know that, please let me know in the comments because I haven't played the first Witcher to completion yet. There's a lot to talk about because there's a lot of new characters that have been introduced next to uh, Gabor. But first off, let's check out the mess tent and talk to the man. Oh, and there's that's actually a lot of new conversations available, so we're gonna be busy for a bit. But let's talk to Gabor first. Your Grace, I need to speak with your quartermaster. Hey, excuse my Elvish, but I can't drink that goat's piss he serves in the mess. Ugh, Reynard's doing no doubt. He doesn't like the men to drink too much. To be blunt, ma'am, what Reynard himself needs is to get good and bluttered for once in his stiff life. <laughs> Okay, yeah, he, he, he does have a point. Uh, Reynard could uh, become a bit more loose. So, I have a proposal for you. A shipment of the best dwarven mead and lager. I can arrange for you to arrive. Trust me, the men's morales may like to be a problem when they pour a bit of fire in their guts. That sounds like a great plan because our morale is at an all-time low at the moment. Um, a drunken army I do not want. Splendid idea. Yeah, here you go. 200 mm. coins. Good point. Very well. Oh, give my thanks, dear Queen. A few more days of that and I'd have been lapping up puddle water. Awesome. I trust you'll arrange the details. Booze, where's Bayou Bob if you need him? Booze. Uh, of course, no worries. And there we go. How happy a dwarf you've made me. Ah, right. And the men too, of course. That's only one bump in morale, actually. We went from low morale to neutral morale. Um, tell me about the Zigrin clan. There we go. We might actually learn more about uh, what his connection to Yarpen is. You're a Zigrin, are you not? I know the name. One of your clan slew the dragon Ockvist. There we go. That's where Yarpen actually helped. Aye. You're thinking of Yarpen. There we go. Cousin of my cousin. Left my hackam when I was but a wee snot. Okay, so it's a cousin of his cousin. Decent enough dwarf, but never could conform to our basic tenets and laws. Though, admittedly, we've so damn many, it's hard to keep them from leaking out your ears. Yeah, Yarpin is a bit of a kind-hearted bandit. Is it that bad? Hmm, I'll put it this way. Among human folk, you can't steal, brawl, murder, all the basics. In Mahakam, we've got laws about how to braid our beards. But I'm no one to complain. The Zilgrins are well-to-do, one of the richer clans. Got more than enough goods to suit our needs, though... We've got some bads as well. Ah, oh, that's interesting. So the Zigrins are actually a rich clan. Which makes you wonder why Yarpin is actually going out. What do you mean? Bah, nay worth your time. I didn't mean to bother you. Sides, best to jabber of such things over a cold pint. Or keg? Ah, there we go. So there's something more behind this. But, uh, yeah, what can we? Can you tell me about Bruver Hoog? Your elder. Or Hoog? I'd like to know more. Do tell me about him, please. Hmm. Uh, one tough horsin, Bruva. Stubborn as an old goat, as you'll soon see for yourself. All in all, though, he's near as scary as some say. Been keeping the clans in check for some two centuries now. Which is near a small feat, I might add, no. No conflicts between them all this time. Are you certain? Ha! <laughs> ha! I, I can't tell if you're jesting. At each other's throats each day they are. Breckenrigs despise the Chivis. Dalbergs would scratch out the Hoog's eyes given half the chance. As for us, we hate them arse-licking fooksies. Ah, the Chivis. The Chivis, you know that from uh, Zoltan, of course, from the Witcher series itself. And then the Dalbergs. If you've read the books, you might know Polly Dalberg. Uh, that's a, a very sad story. He's also a card in Gwent. Uh, he's actually a character that pretty quickly dies in the same chapter that he's introduced in, in a very, a very sad story, but, uh, yeah, there we go. But Bruver's got his ways, keeps each yen in line. If not for him, Mahakam would have fallen to bits ages past. Um, what do you mean? Why? Round 150 years ago, when the elves were fighting that hopeless war against your folk, 
The Elder in Chief ordered the pass to Mahakam sealed tight. If it weren't for that, we'd have ended up like the pointy ears. As it was, we waited for the shite storm to abate. Didn't you open the pass and stretch your legs again till it was safe? Yes, I remember. The manufacturers in Rivia have yet to recover. With all due respect, Your Grace, your workshops forge utter crap. It's not your fault that human folk prefer dwarven goods. Basic market principles, that's all it is. I feel enlightened, Gabor. Thank you. I feel like a, like it's a bit of a cliche almost how dwarves are dealt with in fantasy because they always have some large stronghold in the mountains that they uh, keep to themselves too and uh, produce weapons and ore and stuff like that. They're always blacksmiths, which strikes me a bit as a, a weird cliche. We shall return to this conversation later. No skin off my back. We see each other, your grace. Okay, so that's Gabor. Um... So, let's start with our two, uh, well, rivals a bit next. So, uh, Reynard? Yes, Your Grace. How go things, Reynard? You and Gascon get along now, I hope. Well, you might say we've established a certain rapport, Your Grace. Oh, that sounds great. Tell me more, friend. I don't pry into his affairs, nor he into mine. I'd prefer it if my commanders work together more closely. Your Grace. The man's a brigand. Oh, Reynard. He was a brigand. I must disagree, I fear. Yes, he stopped thieving for now, but only because it's convenient, so to speak. Gascon isn't a changed man. He still hasn't an ounce of honor, dignity. Yet he has a unit of armed men, without which we'd be much worse off. Might not even have survived. Agreed. The strays are excellent fighters. I'd be the first to admit it. I only fear they might turn on us. Leap at our throats when we least expect it. He has a point. Um, and I'm gonna take that advice to heart if it comes to it. It's time I attended to other matters. So let's see uh, the other side of that conversation. Hey ho, how's my favorite queen in the north? You and Reynard, do you get along? Like a cat and a hound. <laughs> get it? Because they call me. Yes, yes, your jests are easily understood. Far more difficult to enjoy. That's probably true, in your royal high and mightiness's case. Will you answer my question? <sighs> we get along because we must. Though it'd be far easier if he pulled the lance from his ass. Haven't heard a truer word in a long while. <laughs> okay, Meeve. Take it easy. What was that? Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. That was that was a bit of honesty there. Um, okay, and that's apparently it. So Gascon does not have a strong opinion on the rain. or not that anything that he's talking about anyway. This time I attended to other matters. Farewell. So, uh, then I think I'm gonna talk to Xavier first. Yes, milady. You choose not to follow your king, Xavier. Why? To fight in the field, with you. This was my wish, my lady. Ah, that is interesting, yeah, because Xavier is, of course, a man from Damavan's army as well. So he did not leave us while uh, Black Rayla did. But what of your home? Rosberg must be rebuilt. Engineers are needed. I have no kin in Rosberg. No soul left for me there. All I've left is revenge. I understand. Okay, so that's why Xavier stayed with us. Other matters await my attention. We shall speak later. So I feel As like you wish, my lady. I feel like we couldn't even lose him, probably. And then, of course, we have Isabel. Let's see if she's still happy. Uh, that doesn't look good. Isabel, apologies. Thoughts consume me sometimes. Is there something you need? Since we left Edirn, you've seemed unsettled. Is all in order? I've seen many wars in my time. All ugly, all repulsive. But what the Imperials did at Aldersburg was... It was unforgivable. Nilfgaard. That's what it does, Isbel. They seek here to repeat the rape of Sintra, the slaughter there. Yes, I saw that. I was there. And at Sodden. Ah, that's interesting. So, um, if you don't know it, I'm not sure how uh, deeply the games go into this, but the Battle of Sodden was very important during the first Nilfgaardian War. So the first time Nilfgaard actually attacked the Northern Realms, they were struck down 
by the combined forces of the northern realms and the mages and sorceresses together on a hill at Sodden. A lot of sorcerers uh, actually lost their lives in that battle, including almost Yennefer and Triss as well. Um, and it was just one horrible battle that did turn out in the favor of the northern realms, but uh, it was, uh, well, not a pleasant experience. That's why uh, Sodden has brought, off, brought up quite a bit in these conversations. Then you know of what they're capable. After Sodden, I took an oath never to take part in another war. Such suffering, such hatred, senseless, all those deaths. Senseless deaths. Our troops sacrificed their lives in defense of their homeland, loved ones. I believe, I must believe there's a better way. Forgive me, ma'am. I must gather my thoughts. Never mind about me, though. I shall perform my duties to my utmost, as ever, as always. Thank you, Isabel. Must not be easy for her as well, since she tries to be as peaceful as she can. So, uh, what do you discuss with my soldiers? You speak with my soldiers a good deal. Said so yourself. I'd like to know what about. Hmm. Corporal Larkin, ma'am. Do you know him? Captain Oisin, perhaps? Or Lieutenant Teagan? Of course I know them. Among my best, they've served me loyally for years. You know them? But did you know that in fleeing Lyria, the Corporal left behind a newborn daughter? His wife was in confinement when you gave the order to march. The Corporal could not go to see them. And true, the Captain has no wife, no child. But he's not seen his brother in five years. Never once been granted leave. Your General Odo's orders always taking precedence. Allow me to guess. You shall now tell me Tegan abandoned his sick mother to follow me. No, ma'am. Count Caldwell's men murdered the Lieutenant's kin. Retaliation for his joining your rebellion. He learned of this just recently. Well, Meave, that rebounded straight into your face again, didn't it? Enough. You've made your point. Yet even were I to order them to return, they wouldn't listen. They know they've got nothing to go home to while Nilfgaard occupies our land. Okay. So it feels like Meave and Isbel don't really agree on much uh, these days. Duty calls. I must go. Of course. Should you need me, I'll be here. Thank you, Isbel. I do like Isbel. She's a, a really... Calm, especially in contrast to the other uh, characters. She's a really calm uh, individual and a soothing presence, I might even say. So, next up, I want to check out the first workshop. First workshop. There's a lot of things to do and we've apparently unlocked a lot more extras as well. So I'm going to have to see because we're clearly limited on supplies. Which means I'm going to have to make some decisions here. So this... We'll take up 25% less of the recruit cap, so from 10 to 25, that's going to be nice. I think I might actually do that, but let's check out the rest first. The recruit cap can actually go to 300. Creating units costs less gold, but gold is not the problem. Each unit gains one armor at the start of a battle, or two armor with a palisade, but that needs an immense amount of wood. And now we have upgrades. Uh, the Strays of Spala is a new unit, I think. Damage unit by five, it's on a row with fire. No, we have that. But damage all units on it by five, so just an upgrade. The Cavalry is also upgraded by one extra damage. And then the Stray Slinger. Ah, the power is boosted and you damage them by four now instead of two. That's a great upgrade, by the way. That is really, really good. Then the Lyrian Cavalry, play a copy of this unit from your deck once you... Ooh, so if you have a few of those, that's going to be nice. Play the top unit from your deck. If it was a Blitz unit, repeat this ability. Interesting. So as long... Ooh, that's a very nice upgrade. Does that mean that you can keep pulling Blitz units? That would be nice. And then the Grey Rider. Uh, you... Ooh, it's boosting by tree now. That is... Mm, and it doesn't cost that much wood, actually. And then the final one enables you to trade gold for wood or recruits, as well as wood for gold. Interesting. A training post where we can swap out gold for who? 
that is, but I can't do that without buying this. So I think this is going to have to be our priority so we can start buying some more wood. And then we get an extra unit, the Lillian Lance Connect, if you use this, gain one charge. Damage an enemy and all enemies with the same power by one, which is powerful. Then the Rivian Sapper upgrade, wow, damage unit by four if it was destroyed, repeat this ability. That can make some great, that can create some great chains if that keeps going on. And the Hush Duke give one charge to adjacent units with order. So you can do that to two units. And then in the workshop, uh, we have the upgrade for the Wagenberg. Damage all units on a row by this unit's armor amount, then lose all armor. Gain one armor whenever this card appears. But, ah, well, so we start with two armor, that's great. A mantlet, mark an ally when it is destroyed, move it to hand instead of graveyard, then destroy itself. Weird thing. Choose a bronze ally in your hand and uh, two copies of it. Then boost all copies of the unit in hand deck and on the battlefield by two. Okay, so they add a boosting effect to the Aretuza Adept. Then the upgrade for the workshop gives us the Rivian Onager. Damage an enemy by three with two charges. Whenever an ally is destroyed, you gain another charge. That is also interesting, especially with the upgraded damage. And then the power of each unit on the row to the average of the row's total power. If the average is three or below, destroy all units on the row, including self. That is a good upgrade, because... Oh, that's not an upgrade, that... Wait, I have a crush, crushing trap, right? Yeah, set the power of each unit on this row to the average of all units' power. That could be a nice combination with the, uh, the unit we saw before here, that damages all the units with the same power. And then in the Alchemist Laboratory, Horse Thief, mark a unit after three turns on turn start, switch its power with this unit's power. But it has restraint, so it can be used on bosses, so that's not really useful. Stray's Infiltrator... Boost this unit by the combined power of the adjacent units, so not just one unit, but the adjacent units in total. And then the Alchemist is the same with just a higher base. Yeah, with the higher base power. So that's not really interesting. So I think the priority should go to the training grounds. So if we upgrade the training grounds, we get the Lyrian Cavalry, the upgraded Regiment Drummer, which is gonna help us uh, take care of what we lost with Rayla. And then the trading post to swap out the gold and wood for recruits. We are already using a Grey Rider, which is also great. Uh, but now we get that boosted by three every time instead of one, which is going to be enormously helpful, actually. Uh, especially combined with the Regiment Drummer. Then we can decrease the gold cost of creating units by 25%. Going to do that as well. Which unlocks the Palisade, I think. Can be... Probably doesn't update correctly. Uh, and now we don't have enough wood to do my final uh, upgrade I want to do. But we should get a trading post. Yeah, how does this work? Exchange gold for wood. So it is times four. Which of course the game knows that. So I'm going to exchange that three times. Hmm... Yeah, I want to keep 300, so I'm going to do it four times. There we go. And then in the workshop, we're going to go for what I wanted to do for a while now. The upgrade to the engineer's drafting desk. So that's where we needed that wood. So we get a blacksmith. Allows us to redeploy a trinket from the graveyard. And then the upgraded war wagon. So it spawns three light infantry units instead of only two. And the Aretuza Adept, but I don't think I might actually be able to use her. We'll see. We'll see. So, resources well spent. Now, I want to change up the deck a bit since we're in a new chapter and we got a few new uh, units. As well as Gabor, I'm gonna suppose. So, we lost 10. We have 10 recruit uh, capacity extra now since we lost Rayla. But we did get, there we go, Gabor Zigrin. Spawn and play Gabor left hook or Gabor bottomless pockets. And the left hook, damage a unit by 10 if it was destroyed, deal any remaining damage to another unit. <laughs> or play a trinket from your deck. That is incredibly versatile. So that's on top of Gabor himself. So that's 13 plus 10 damage or an extra trinket. Yeah, he's gonna go into the deck. And I'm gonna make some adjustments, so give me a second. So otherwise, no big changes. I added a Grey Rider and a Regiment Drummer and removed the uh, Alchemist. So uh, that should get us to a healthy total now. And uh, yeah, 
we're good to go. And lastly, we have two more reports. So, situation in Mahakam, stable, unchanged for centuries. No evidence of internal opposition, open or covert. Power in Mahakam held by Elder in Chief Bruver Hoog, ruling on behalf of clans. Warning, Hoog, extremely difficult negotiation partner. Tiresome to get him to sit down to talks, deathly wearying to convince him to make even minor compromises. Only values good of Mahakam and its inhabitants. Appeals to anything else lead nowhere. During present war, Mahakam maintains strict neutrality. Trades with both Nilfgaard and Northern Realm. So we need to keep that in mind. And then a letter from, from Captain Tobias. Your Majesty has promised I am reporting to you on the situation in Diria and Rivia. Your son is king in name only. True power is held by Count Caldwell and General Abdehi. From what I hear, both lust for soul control, this conflict between them is inevitable. Soon Nilfgaard will start expelling peasants from the best lands of Lyria and Rivia and importing their own settlers to replace them. Willem tries to delay the process, but General Abdei will not relent. Our prayers for your success, my lady, Captain Tobias. So that actually matches with what happens in the books when Nilfgaard takes over uh, new areas. They start importing their own settlers to replace the settlers that were already there. And that is it, I think. We're good to go. So uh, let's get into our first battle on Mahakam soil, because that might come in handy later on. Mahakam, Mahakam, welcome to you. What an honor. Even the arbalists salute us with cocked quarrels. Oh, that well. An ounce of prevention saves a slag heap of trouble. Indeed, so... Uh, we're getting welcomed by two Mahakam guards, they even look the part, but they let us in. Look at that. That looks cool. Can we even go here? Looks like there's some upper area up there, some mining equipment, and there's even light shining from the buildings. That's interesting. Too shabby as views go, eh? Mm, were it not for the howling wind, I'd make a sketch. Okay, so yeah, it's it's chilly up here. It really looks chilly, but look at that view. And there's something in the distance there. That's probably Mahakam itself. The Heroes Roads. Let's check out the notice board. And if the map wants to load. So there's recruits over there. And then our first exclamation point. But nothing else, apparently. And there's also a few more supplies here. So let's just take advantage of that. I keep getting more and more recruits. Because that's... We're almost up to 300. But I don't really see the use for now. It allows you to uh, experiment a bit. But I'm going to wait until I have a bit more supplies to check out my... Uh, to upgrade my recruit cap. Because right now I'm just blocked by that. Didn't expect it. But uh, because of Isbel's high uh, requirement and a few others, it's really... Oh. Is that an Arakas and a troll? Eve rode slowly. Her surroundings interesting to her. Her ears keen to take in the cacophony of sounds. The sharp whistle of wind rushing past towering peaks. The squeak of wagon wheels rolling over frozen snow. And the roar of beasts. What the? I dare not venture a guess. Hmm. Gabo scratched his chin. An ice troll. Or one of them barbegazer majabas. These beasts, are they tame? As the dragon? <laughs> not in your life. Fierce horses, every last one of them. Spring cleaning year past, one year bit my arm clear off. Okay, so a Barbagazi and an ice troll. The Queen's brow rose in a silent inquiry. All right, you don't quite ken the context. Each spring, with the melting of the snows, a good bit of that filth comes out the ground. That's when Bruver Hoog summons all dwarves for spring cleaning. We cut down as much of the filth as we can, and that means relative calm the rest of the year out of the corner of her eye meave noted a dark shape darting between rock formations calmly she drew her sword and brandished it a time or two to warm up her stiff arms seems it is our lot to assist you with this cleaning lyriums arms at the ready prepare to fight yay a monster fight to start up with which means an overpowered um Aik, Aik, I've lost, I almost lost his name. Look at that. Holy crap, that looks horrifying. That is not an ice troll. That is one of those things from Blood and Wine. I forget the name. For a great many... The Shalemar, there. It's on the screen. It's a Shalemar. 
For a great many years, Mahakam was closed off to the outside world. When the Elven Kings began their last desperate push to drive men from the lowlands, the Dwarf Slam shut the passage to their mountainous realm. For centuries they waited. Only when the slaughter in the valleys below subsided, did they once again open their gates. The Dwarves refer to this day as the Great Air and Out. Do not let Bruvi die, eliminate the Shalemar, and hint in one fell swoop. There we go. So the Shalemar is Stop both. Standing around like corns on a toe. Get to work. It's a nicely designed Shalemar. It's uh, both the leader and already on the field and it passed. So Mighty Shalemar, no ability, and over here every three turns on turn start, randomly damage enemies by a portion of Shalemar's current armor. Then move to the other row. If on the melee row, damage the highest enemy by this unit's current armor. If on the ranged row, damage the lowest enemy by this unit's current armor. Then set the armor to 8. So I need to be able to damage this as much as possible. When deployed spawn 2, Mahak and Protector and move an enemy from the melee to the ranged row. Okay, I, ch I, uh, I also changed Meave to back to Warhammer so I can force uh, whatever unit comes next. So I think... I can actually finish this rather quickly. If I use the drummer. Army's a waste of time for one And me. then use Meave Warhammer to put Egg on top. Ah! There we go. Egg boosts to 12 and moves to the top. And then we can use the regiment drummer to pull him next time. Okay, so there we go. Then we can pull egg from the deck as a 12th unit we're fighting against Prepare monsters fight. so we can attack with 12 damage honor. and then we have we just not had don't have enough so deploy uh maybe i should just use the gray rider next yeah the gray rider as you first. command so you just damaged him by the armor but there is no armor okay so that's eight armor that's 22, but I can do 22 damage in one go if I want to. So let's use Alzu Thunder first. There we go. That's one. Then we get the Lyrian Horn, maybe? No. Let's use Gabor first. Because Gabor can do 10 damage. There we go. End the turn. And then we can use the Lyrian Horn to finish us off. Goodbye. And it's over. All right. You got some splitting to do. You're welcome, Brover. And the they exploded. As the waves of speared Shalemars died down, the crowd of Mahakaman infantry parted. A dwarf stepped forth, grey as a snow fox, wrinkled as a prune. He walked with difficulty, supporting himself on a battle axe, its two heads dripping blood. This would be our Elder-in-Chief, Bruver Hoog. Hello, Bruver. And who might your guests be, Gabor? Meave, Queen of Lyria and Rivia, and our associates in court. My regards, Elder. I come... You come for something. Coins my first wager, fighting bodies my second. Well, what is it you want? I'm on in the years, I, but I've not gone dotty. Tja, you menfolk. Got to fall on hard times to remember us dwarves. I've come with a design in mind, I cannot deny. But hear me out and you shall see. She's armed! Gabor! Why the devil did you let her in here like that? Armed without a sack or her heat! Be because of the, the ring? She has the leaden ring, Elder. A gift from a king. From Demavand, lassie, I came that already. Trust a man, give him something of value, and he'll go and give it away as easy as a street whore gives away nubs. It's a good thing he didn't pawn it. <laughs> Sons of humans. I like this guy. I I'm not accustomed to interruptions. Listen to my plea, I beg you. Or, hmm, let's stay friendly. I've traveled far to see you. Hear me out, I beg you. Yeah, let it be my loss. Go on, heave her away. Nilfgaard has overrun my realms. It has overrun Edurn. The Blackclads are at the foot of Mahakam. They will seek to overrun your land sooner or later as well. We must act. We must react together while there is still time. But they're neutral. Time? 
What do you care of time, lass? Got how many summers to you? Forty, maybe. Had you grown up amongst dwarven folk, at your age you'd be learning to crochet dolls. No more than that. She's gonna be pissed in a second, but um, I feel like Meave doesn't read her own reports. I've seen 400 summers come and go. And I've been elder for 200. And you know what I've learned in that time? That meddling in your idiot scraps doesn't ever bring any good. Now, on a normal day, I'd have you all thrown clear out of this land I love. But you've the leaden ring, and that grants you the right to hospitality. And here, in Mahakam, laws and rights are sacred. You may stay in the pass as long as you wish. Young Zigrin will serve as your guide. And once you've tired of the mountains, well, you can the way down into the valleys. I bid you farewell. My Lord Elder, with all due respect, we came to your aid. We smote the beasts with you, yet... And who the demons is this one? Count Reynard Odo. Ho <laughs> ho, Odo, Lodo, Bodo! <laughs> now, you listen and listen well. We didn't ask for aid, and you know why? Because I've my dignity. Not like some. So Reynard, from now on, you're Odo, Lodo, Bodo. Mates and wenches! Spring cleaning's done, beast cullen's over, Mount Carbon beckons us home. Follow me! Your Grace, be not dismayed. We will find a way. Okay, no rain it, we have lost. Of course, Reeve, come on. Yes, we must, we will. Manage we shall, true. Though damned if I know how. We have none other to whom we can turn, no other land where we can flee. Let us convene in council, Your Grace. Consider together what's to be done. We've yet Redania, Temeria... Your Grace, might I draw you aside a wee moment, for a jabber? Reynard, please excuse me. Gabor might have an idea. Well, what is it you want? I ken the Elder-in-Chief didna make a good first impression. <laughs> and the second? Is it any better? Mm, to be quite frank, no. I'll try elsewise. Not all's lost, trust me. Prover's a stubborn goat, no doubt about it, but a goat to be persuaded. And I happen to ken how. Okay. You seek to aid me, why? The selfless impulse to help. I don't believe it exists. So before you describe how you aim to aid me, be kind enough to explain why you wish to do so. Unsolicited, mind you, and clearly against your elders' wishes. A query of my own to answer yours. Do you ken when Bruver Hoog last strode down the mountains into your lowlands? I know not. While King Sambuk sat on the throne? Point of fact, never. Hoog was born here and he'll die here, like most Mahakaman dwarves. Whereas I'm a frequent visitor in your human lands. Been an emissary to royal courts, Trade guilds, mummers, troops, and I've eyes. I can see all the rubbish goes on between yous. Nilfgaard's insatiable. The black clads will not stop till they've put the whole continent neath their boot. From Ophir in the south to the Dragon Mountains in the north, gods forbid they grip all the Nordlings' realms in their vice. Cause then we'll have their hordes all round, controlling all the trade routes, supply lines, diversions even. And then they'll control terms and prices. Ooh. We dwarves have never been on a lead, let alone a short one. So, in short, we'll all be better off with the black clads back across the Yaruga. And I've seen your grace. Seen you in battle. You've brawn and bite. And with the right support, you can drive them back. I ken that well. Okay. Sounds like a, as good a reason as any. Very well, I'm all ears. What must we do to spur Bruverhoog to aid us? Hmm. I might start with the thorn in our side that are beasts. A bigger thorn than most expect. See, in our never-ending search for gold, we dug deep, too deep, and reached abysses where monsters are born, or however they come to be. Soon as it turns a bit warmer, they crawl out to feed. And there's more every year. What you saw there, the spring cleaning, 
that's just light yearly upkeep. It dinna go at the source of the blade. Every spring we cull enough so we can live and trade and mine normal-like. But there are corridors in the upper valleys midst the peaks where more lie waiting to pounce. So many, there's settlements that have done been abandoned. I still fail to see how this relates to myself and Bruva. Your Majesty, slay the beasts down to their last, and you'll win the hearts of the clans. All of them. And with the clans behind you, why? The Elder will have no choice. He'll bend an ear, treat you serious. So hearts and minds help out the dwarves, and Bruver will have no other choice than to help us. You've got two sites through which beasts swarm in great numbers. There's Daver's Abyss and an abandoned underground settlement called Burra's Rump. Destroy those, collapse the corridors, problem solved. So I feel like this is going to be a point where we might be able to lose, well, not might be able, might lose Egg if we don't handle the monsters correctly. But uh, why hasn't Bruver done it to the matter himself? Mm. You colour the solution as simple and known. Why has Bruver Hoog not gone at the matter? <laughs> you must learn one thing about us dwarves of Mahakum. Customs. Traditions. Why, we're obsessed. Goes thrice for Bruva. The Elder deliberates weeks on end. And that's in considering if we should not wear suspenders, because they might be through its side, and should thus be forbidden. We've a set of laws, the Four Dwarves Codex. One of its tenants says, Dare ye not close a corridor once oped? So, no self-respecting dwarf can nor will do it. But you... You're free out with. The laws didn't apply. You've a free hand in sealing the corridors from which the beasts come. Collapse them. Flood them, I didn't ken. But solve the grief once and for all. Okay, and that would be enough? And this, t'would suffice? I believe it would. Uh, but, but, but find your other ways to win the heart of a clan or Bruver itself. Do so. Can he bring no harm? Hmm. All this sounds rather toilsome, yet... I do favour this to losing another moon seeking out a court where we would at first be welcomed, only later to hear another rebuke. You've my gratitude, Gabor. You've shown me a way. Very well. Let us think on these beasts. See what's to be done. I do wonder when Geralt is gonna come into this story, because I know from the launch screen that he probably is in this game. And from the books, he has uh, a certain altercation with Meeve. Not a positive one, mind you, but still, he's in there. So, yeah, I do wonder how that's going to play out. So, we need to help out the clans to force Bruver to join us in battle. But, before that, I'm going to take a little break. This episode has been going on long enough. We've learned a lot. A lot of exposition has uh, passed us along the way. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. And thank you guys enormously for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next episode of Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. Goodbye. Yeah,